Hi there, welcome to my views and news. Three new stories. Firstly, Ethiopian foreign minister called Somalia ungrateful. What did he say? And we say that Somalia is ungrateful. It is not recognizing Ethiopian service in protecting Somalia's government. Second, we have Oromo Liberation Army spoke on the issue of defection of one of its main commanders. Ola is denying any split. I did a video on that uh, 48 hours ago. Now let's see what Ola is saying. And lastly, US ambassador to Ethiopia is once again raising alarm about the security situation in Ethiopia, saying that Economy is paralyzed in Ethiopia. It's very interesting because the Ethiopian government claims as if economy is on the right track and Ethiopia is on path to prosperity and development. But what is Erwin Messinga saying, the US ambassador to Ethiopia? Uh, firstly, viewers, uh, war of words ongoing between the leaders of Ethiopia and Somalia. Uh, with every passing day, we are seeing intensity rise in this war. All efforts of mediation led to no results so far. No mediation still ongoing. Turkey uh, hoping for another meeting between Ethiopian and Somalia's leaders in coming days. Patske Silasi, Ethiopian foreign minister, in a talk yesterday called Somalia's government, Somalia's president, ungrateful. He said that uh, Ethiopian soldiers laid down their lives. Ethiopia sacrificed for Somalia. Its government was, uh, Somalia's government uh, was not able to survive had there been no Ethiopian support. Ethiopia supported Somalia's government. Otherwise, the government could have been dismantled by al Shaba. Instead of appreciating Ethiopian contribution, Somalia is showing that it is ungrateful. This is what Atatske Silasi said. Uh, can we say that Somalia is ungrateful and it is not recognizing Ethiopian services? If you talk to Somalia's leaders, they say that Al Shabaab was uh, formed or it rose because of Ethiopian military intervention in Somalia. 2006 military, 2007 military intervention led to the rise of Al-Shabaab. And they accused Ethiopia. A few days ago, Ahmed Fiki accused Ethiopia of killing more than 20,000 Somalis during that uh, military intervention in Somalia from Ethiopia in 2007. Uh, so they blame Ethiopia for rise of Al Shabaab. Firstly, secondly, Al Shabaab does not have only a Somali agenda. If it takes over Somalia, can anyone guarantee that it won't uh, try to capture neighboring countries? No one can guarantee it. Its agenda is huge. It wants to definitely penetrate Ethiopia as well. It would like to penetrate other countries too. So its threat is a regional threat. What Ethiopia is doing now, it is protecting itself from Al Shabaab because if Al Shabaab takes control or takes control of Mogadishu, they could make a move towards Somalia region of Ethiopia as well. And they have their claims. They say that. Ethiopia in illegal occupation of Somali region. So I think Ethiopian leaders should be careful. They should not just uh, taunt 
the leaders of Somalia. This fight against Al Shabaab is a joint fight. It's in the interest of all the parties which are part of this fight. Because uh, Al Shabaab's rise to power to Mogadishu could be a threat to neighboring countries. Too. By the way, when these leaders use strong language against each other, blame each other, that spoils the atmosphere for reconciliation, atmosphere for engagement and talks. At least they should hold their tongue or, and whatever they want to say, they should say in the meetings. These two parties met twice, indirectly though, so they can exchange their views there. Instead of using public forums for uh, such uh, strong statements, they should uh, resolve this issue behind closed doors so that people are not affected. Secondly, viewers, Ola is denying a split in the Romo Liberation Army. Ola uh, representative talked to some international news outlets yesterday. Two days ago, I told you that uh, Ola had split. Tanya Nagasa had joined the government, you can say, because reportedly Sanye's press briefing, uh, Sanye's uh, briefing and his interviews are being managed by ENDF officers. So he is sitting with the government now. Tanya was the leader of uh, commander of Central Command. Now, what is Ola's position? Ola says that Sanye, uh, after second round of talks between the Ola and government in Tanzania, Sanye was removed from Central Zone Command and he was appointed as the head of intelligence. Sanye refused to be refused to take charge. That is why Ola's executive committee fired Sanye from the Oromo Liberation Army. He was expelled and Abdi was uh, appointed in his place. Ola representative accused Sanye of being in secret contacts with the ENDF and ENDF operatives. This is what I told you two days ago that uh, according to Ola, uh, Sanye was in collusion with the Ethiopian military and prosperity party and Jilmaro reportedly intercepted some communication between Sanye and oh, federal government. That is why he took action. Sanye denies uh, contacts with the government. He says that Jilmaro is running Ola like a dictator. There are no rules, no laws. He makes decisions, he can fire anyone, he can make any decision, he is not accountable to anyone. That is why he has decided to separate himself. So, Ola has confirmed our report that Sunny Nagasa uh, is no more part of the Romo Liberation Army. What will he do next, Sunny? Will he uh, form a separate Ola group to confront the Ola of Kumsa Derebab? Or will he just uh, uh, start uh, a peaceful life uh, by joining talks with the government. Let's see. Uh, the government will try to use him against Ola. In which form will he will he be used? That remains to be seen. Lastly, with US ambassador to Ethiopia, Arvind Masinga is raising alarm about the security situation in Ethiopia, saying that the economy is paralyzed. Arvind's claim is uh, obviously not in accordance with what the government is saying. Government acknowledges that uh, security situation is impacting the economy. It says that uh, the economy is in the right track. Macroeconomic reforms have been introduced. Ethiopia is producing uh, historic uh, crop produce and uh, it is on path to self-sufficiency and uh, in coming years, things will change a lot in terms of development and prosperity. Arvind Masinga is painting another picture. He says that every uh, that, that fighting in Amhara, Romia is paralyzing the economy in 
Secondly, it says that education sector has been severely affected. 4,000 schools are out of uh, uh, service. Millions of students are out of schools. Uh, how can a country develop if there is no education, if economy is paralyzed? In a way, Arvind Masinga is challenging the narrative of the government. That government will have to resolve security issues first, only then the country can be steered towards prosperity and self-sufficiency. Thank you for watching.